Yo guys, what's going on? Welcome to another video. This is Arunava. I'm your photographer and today I'm here to share a lot about Lightroom Mobile. Having said which, I'm going to call this segment as my coffee tutorials because this is really early in the morning and I'm also having my coffee. So without delaying, let's jump into Lightroom Mobile. Hey guys, what's going on? Um, welcome to another video. If you're here for the first time, do check out my Instagram at arunava.nag and also if you like the video at the end of this video, do like this video and also subscribe the video because I'm actually making this tutorial into two parts. So um, hit the bell icon so that you get to know when it's the next part is coming. So in this video, we are going to talk about Lightroom Mobile and we are going to divide it in two parts. The first part will have all the uh, features that you can get for free which is basically you just need to have a phone and just download the app and i guess it's available in both android and apple store the topics we'll discuss today is actually how to shoot raw in lightroom mobile a lot of people don't even know that you can actually shoot raw, raw in lightroom mobile and then uh, what are the benefits what are the settings and once we have looked into all the settings and got some pictures um, we'll <laughs> consider both indoor and outdoor and uh, then we'll bring it in and then we'll see how we can edit them and also because you're shooting it in raw it's real the colors are really smooth and it looks way more satisfying and convincing than editing a jpeg let's get on to the first topic how we can actually shoot in raw in lightroom mobile all right so let's jump into your lightroom mobile so once you open it uh, the first thing you get uh, at the, uh, is your images i have a bunch of images over there but at the right corner you can see there is camera so we're gonna select camera so once we get into the camera um we are gonna look on the first option that needs to be turned on is at the top which is your dng and um, we want to shoot in dng because dng is your raw format um, the reason of shooting in RAW is basically you get a higher dynamic range and also you get more information. The difference between the DNG and uh, mobile is, um, file size is like 13 MBs whereas your JPEG is only 2 to 3 MBs. So you can definitely see how much details is there. So once that is done, at the, at the below corner you can see there is like auto and after that uh, there is professional high dynamic range and we are going to talk about these three in this video and the long exposure and the depth capture are like the newest features and we are going to talk about um, in the next uh, part two. So um, in uh, <coughs> auto there is like nothing to set about everything is auto only thing you can change is like the lens if you want to have it wide or telephoto so uh, below the camera button you can see there is this um, wide and if you change it into telephoto it just goes like really uh, zoomed in and also um, it creates the a wider telephoto kind of um, version of it so uh, we'll just keep it white for this uh, tutorial and we'll go into the Pro uh, which is the one that I mostly use and uh, coming into the Pro you, we see all these amazing options which is having like exposure, seconds which is your shutter speed, um, ISO is your ISO or the light sensitivity and then you have white balance and then after that you have your exp um, focus which is your auto and after that also um, if you kind of change it and go back to the default settings, you can select the reset. So, in the exposure, I generally don't do much on the exposure. I leave it just uh, alone because I, I like to set my exposure through my shutter speed and my ISO. So, we'll go into the shutter speed. When we click on that, we can actually like try. Uh, it's an auto if we drag in you can see it goes into manual so you can select by yourself like how much you want to select it at and as you see you kind of like go to a lower shutter speed you kind of like start to get that image but generally if you're at auto i kind of like i think it does a really good job but if you're really careful about getting okay uh, about your highlights and how you want to look into it then yeah it's up to you it's uh, all about setting that mood um, next we'll go into the ISO which is again uh, once you drag that it goes into your you like whatever you like to put it onto. Generally I leave it in auto but um, if you do not know uh, you want to sh 
shoot in lower ISO because you don't have a and wanna have a lot of noise into your picture and then uh, unless it, it's like really dark but the uh, next is your white balance just like any camera this has a white balance um, uh, for us we have like fluorescent tungsten and then we have daylight and cloudy and one cool feature is also like um, if you want to select the white balance from your scene so if I want to select that and as my white balance I'm just going to select, click on it and then it just gets me that white balance and you can see how it looks different but we're gonna keep it into auto and you see again that yellow color comes back <laughs> um, of the wall so that's really uh, really important and I think it's a kind of really cool feature um, having said uh, we are going to go into the very important feature which I really uh, use a lot is actually the focus so if this is not a uh, case uh, if you have something like one cup and then we have another bottle and then if you select it you kind of see the depth of field is created but I like to set it manually and for that I generally like to keep it in uh, if I'm gonna do like an auto to manual you can see like this green field actually shows what's in focus and what's out of focus so um, slowly if we just keep pulling it and see uh, the cup, uh, the front cup comes into the focus and then the depth of field looks way more nicer and um, I feel like the distance uh, created is way nicer manually than actually it is uh, in auto. Um, however, it also um, uh, leads to the fact that if you can, if you want to actually focus on the back thing, you can further go back uh, using the manual and then make the front look blur, which is again your depth of field or the focus that you're looking into. Uh, for our case right now, we'll put it back into auto and that's kind of like uh, the basic settings and reset is just reset if you I've already spoken about the wide and telephoto and the final feature that we are going to talk about is the mode that is high dynamic range so high dynamic range is basically um, now again I'm gonna talk if you really want to know in details which uh, this video doesn't cover about you can leave on comments and I can talk about it um, but generally um, high dynamic range is the variance of your one color from your black to bright uh, white level so basically having red green and blue and varying it from 0 to 255 and uh, when you go into the high dynam uh, dynamics range you are basically uh, capturing more information more colors and more more kind of like um, yeah basically more information uh, over that scale and um, then you are kind of getting um, um, more high dynamic range so um, uh, yeah Generally, uh, also like if, uh, if you're going into shooting like sea, when I'm traveling like sea, sky and stuff, if I, I've seen like when I use the high dynamic range, the blue color looks really smooth and uh, that's just an example. It might also apply to small things or food. But uh, still, generally, I really like the mode like professional and um, we're gonna use professional. So, um, let's... So I'm, I'm using this light and we just can hit it up here, we will give you an example how it looks and then once you have set up everything um, you can go back into the focus and then just get everything into focus and also you can select your shutter speed. I'll select somewhat like this and uh, I'll just leave the ISO a little higher but generally this two are tight so it just goes auto but you can again make it like what you wish to do it i think around this point looks good or maybe i can just leave this to auto because it's like really looking dark anyways and that's kind of it let's shoot it all right we have our image and that's how it looks and you can see how much depth of field is created um, one cool feature would be actually really again going back to the white balance and then selecting and then just use that as a, as a white balance coming back here and then take another picture of this and i think that will look much more cooler than the previous one so 
these are our images one is this one another is this one um, I've kept uh, you can see there is a light uh, actually shining from the top uh, which is actually the same light that I'm using for the recording and um, coming back also this is another so uh, without going into editing this a lot uh, right now so we are going to go into a couple of scenarios one is outdoor one is indoor so we're gonna show, uh, edit this indoor and see what are the these are um, ways we can edit it make it look interesting uh, we'll go into the features that you can get it for free um, when the app comes in and then the, the paid features as I said that I'll be speaking into the part 2 so that goes into the part 2 um, so <coughs> let's look into the scenarios that we have and now get into the editing we came outside and it's very sunny and very windy i'm not gonna talk a lot over here um because the wind is so bad i don't know how the sound will be after while editing it might be a mess but what i'm gonna do is actually take some shots around here so i live uh, in a place where there's a lot of mountains and it looks very pretty so I'm gonna make a couple of shots and take a screen video of that and then I'll also sh tell you how, why did I do this and how I went ahead and sorry about the bus I am really not sure how the sound is gonna turn out over here but I hope everything's good alright let's move on Alright, so the first location will be here and I'll be taking the picture over here. So I'm just going to show you how the place looks like. So far over there, there's a mountain and then there is this wall over here and alright, so there is this wall over here. So what I think is like this will act as a nice guideline to have a blue sky and after that we will be using the light from mobile and take a shot. Let's see how that goes. Alright, so we are in our Lightroom mobile and we will get into here and this is our image. So before I start, um, I generally have my presets, I generally kind of like take it and go into my uh, in presets and then probably I'll just use this and then make some uh, changes but uh, for this tutorial we wouldn't be using any presets we'll just see how things looks like and the first thing I generally like to go is like into the lights um, you can always start I think auto is a great option to start with it kind of gives you everything to start play along but if you don't want to go into the auto just go into your exposure and I think uh, we have a lot of shadows here so we'll bring up the shadows a bit and uh, reduce the highlights and also probably get a little bit of contrast and some blacks probably not so much though I'm not a big fan of increasing blacks so we'll keep it there and maybe get a little bit of exposure but before even uh, doing that we are, once we have done that we'll go into the white balance I guess like for me white balance is very important and we'll just select the wall to be our white balance um, once that is done, um, I'm not very happy with it, probably I'll warm it up a little bit and the tint I'll probably put it a little for the cinematic effect, probably a little greener. Once that is done, I'll just increase the vibrance and return, have a little bit less saturation. Um, then we'll go into the mix. In the mix, you get all the colors. Basically, this is uh, same as your any color editor or the hue saturation tab where you have all the colors and then you have hue saturation and luminance. So we do not have a lot of red components, but we can always see. You can see that if you reduce the the back and uh, if you actually increase it or. In this case, actually reducing it, um, so the color of the cap changes. But I'm just gonna keep it orange. It kind of looks good. Uh, maybe a little sa less saturation. Um, some of the most important colors to dominant colors I can see is actually the blue. And if you kind of turn in the blue, it will look like this or like this. And uh, sometimes people really like to go a very too much into color but I like to sat uh, reduce the saturation a bit to make it a little more <laughs> kind of give the realistic look 
and in this case we have plenty of lumina uh, luminance but a little bit won't harm um, greens greens would be interesting we can change the background a little bit and then uh, saturation can go down again and luminance can go down again <coughs> um, the, uh, the reason I'm actually reducing the luminance of the background is because um, generally whatever is in focus you want to keep it in focus and also the colors needs to be vibrant whatever is out of focus or insignificant in your image everything is significant but uh, in this case the background you want to unsaturate it for the fact that um, it's a background and your your viewers eyes will be driven into what's more vibrant it's generally how the human brain works and then once that is done i'm probably i'm just gonna play around a little bit with the yellows to the oranges and uh, down a little bit with the saturation a tad bit yes once that is done probably we can go and play around with a little bit of the orange and maybe science push them a little harder yes um so once it goes down it actually goes a little down but i kind of like it somewhere here i don't like it too much kind of teal probably we can keep it teal yeah right all right once uh we are kind of like okay happy with the color i'll just probably go back here then the curves curves is like one of the places i really like to spend a lot of time in here and then we'll just probably uh we'll get our points and probably first uh, we'll take our um sorry about that okay so once we have all this um first gonna uh, wash out a little bit of the black kind of gives the moody feeling in this case and then kind of does i'm gonna put uh, some more points and get the highlights up for a punch and uh, then I'll, I really like to add in some blues to the shadow so once I do, I do that so that's how it looks and then again we'll add just the exposure a little bit kind of looks good split toning so split toning is really interesting and I kind of really like it so if you are actually like pushing something towards a little warmer towards the highlight and then a little bit for the shadows like this it kind of gives you a nice feeling also you can actually put a little teal over there and then reduce the yellows a bit balance you can change it if you want to have more blues or more highlights that kind of goes there so once that is done i think a little bit of clarity is needed and texture is very important um vignetting will be not too much a little bit is cool and that's about it i'll probably go back one more time to the highlights and get a little back of bit of highlights back and that would do my work so um i'm not going to spend a little more time but i'm just gonna here to actually show you the various tools that you can use in here you also have some spot healing brushes uh, but we do not have a case of that and i don't really actually use much of spot healing brushes here because these are like mostly um using light mobile for my travel vlogs or my instagram stories and stuff like that and i don't want to spend a bunch of time into editing so again um i'll quickly show how it might look if i if we had gone with our presets that's how it would look um that's my own preset and um but anyways we'll just uh, edit it ourselves uh, so we'll go back to the lights and then probably for this time i'll just to make it faster i'll probably do an auto and then probably just reduce the exposure over there once that is done um i'll also get, get back a little bit of the blacks and uh, uh, maybe reduce the shadows as well highlights are good and then from the curves uh, probably do a punch over there uh, a little bit of black and a little bit a lot more of highlights that gives a boost like you can literally see how much that has boosted so um white balance looks good for right now i don't think anything more than that would be really necessary but if at all you are not happy you can probably uh, choose from the uh, clouds I guess um, yeah generally you want to choose your white balance from something gray or nearby white so that's about it and once that we are done um, I still kind of like the previous white balance and we'll go into the mix okay so in the mix we have this nice blue first again we have a lot of blue over here so we'll try to make it not super that looks so 
all uh, of like crazy I'll probably reduce the saturation a tad bit and also very importantly I'll get a little bit of luminance back into the sky if you do, if you want if you are more into like saturation you do not need to you, you, you use the saturation it looks pretty good but uh, now once that is done we'll go into the science we'll push the science a bit and then we'll go into the green which is actually going to look very nice once you push it towards the blue and then we'll reduce them and reduce the saturation and luminance to kind of like um, give that kind of vibes or the feelings that we are going for and then probably we can go all the way i guess also a very dominant color will be uh, uh yellow over here but i don't want to make it like super orange or something so just a little bit and a little bit over here probably boost a little bit of the saturation and reduce the luminance we'll go into the red uh red won't do much over here and in the orange also i guess it will affect the leaves so once those are done now i'm kind of happy with the picture and this is how the picture looks in full screen which looks quite amazing and see how smooth is that color of the sky it's like there is literally it's amazing and um, now once that is done probably i'll go back to what we did the last time i really like to wash out uh, when i'm kind of working on other things so maybe a little bit of that and also a little bit of blue to the shadows yeah also without that also looks kind of nice yeah all right so that's one shot of the outside so i guess you kind of have an idea what are the tools you can use in the lightroom mobile and also the kind of uh, things that you can do in lightroom mobile all right guys so that was it for this video i hope you learned something out of it do share it with your friends and family at this time because this is an app you can get hooked to and it's like free and anyone can use it as long as they have a phone with a camera and if you have liked this video do hit the thumbs up button and if you think my contents are really kind of engaging you and you are liking them please consider subscribing to the channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon because i'm making videos way more frequent now than before also next week i'll be dropping the part two and it, uh, if you are considering after you have used the app that if you want to also get the paid features which includes the selective gradients and also those uh, those new features that i'm talking about so um that video will be covering all those things so until then uh, take care of yourself uh, spend great time with your family and i'll be seeing you in the next week